Hello and welcome into this week's edition of the NASCAR Xfinity Series Rewind Show right here on Racing News Now. As always, I'm your host, Garth Allen. Thank you once again for joining me today. If this is your first time catching a Racing News Now video, consider going down below and hitting that subscribe button and ringing the bell for notifications so you don't miss a thing going forward from RNN. On today's edition of the Xfinity Rewind, we're looking back at Saturday's 18th annual Kansas Lottery 300. 200 laps, 300 miles around the 1.5 mile D-shaped Kansas Speedway in Kansas City, Kansas. We got started with Calamity very early in this race. Seven cautions for a total of 41 laps. First one came at lap number one. We've got eight playoff contenders. Half of them got taken out in this wreck. A very... Uh, Bad start to the round of eight for a lot of these guys. Cole Custer in the double zero, Ross Chastain in the four, Michael Annette in the five, Justin Allgaier in the seven, Ryan Truex in the 11, the 20 of Christopher Bell, the 22 of Austin Sendrick, the 23 of Spencer Gallagher, and the 98 of Chase Briscoe, all getting caught up in this lap one turn two accident, and it would uh, really shake up the playoff picture, as we'll see here in a few moments. Very quickly after that, we had another caution lap 13 as the 19 of Brandon Jones got into the wall in the back stretch. Lap 26, the 23 of Spencer Gallagher again getting into another incident, this time on the front stretch. Stage one finally concluded. Stage one was very crazy. Finally concluded at lap number 45 with Daniel Hemrick taking the stage victory. Stage two, we had a couple more incidents. Lap 58, the number eight of Junior Villa went around in turn number four. And then the incident between Ryan Priest, Garrett Smithley, and Joey Gase in turn number four on lap 90 would end up being the end of stage number two as John Hunter Nemechek took the win in that stage. Lap number 165, the only caution in stage number three, kind of calming down as we get later into the race, only incident in stage number three, would be for the 78 of Vinnie Miller stalling on the track at lap 165. Ten lead changes in this race among six drivers. Daniel Hemrick led the most with 128. John Hunter Nemechek led a good portion of laps as well, leading 64. And then four drivers led two laps apiece. Elliot Sadler, Tyler Reddick, Matt Tift, and Josh Williams, all leading two laps in this race. All right, let's get into your results. Daniel Hemrick may have led the most laps in this race, but John Hunter Nemechek had the fastest car at the end of the race, and he was able to win this race. His first career Xfinity Series victory, and boy, was he a happy 21-year-old after this race. Uh, definitely a big moment here for John Hunter Nemechek in his career, being able to win his first Xfinity race. But then you've got Daniel Hemrick on the other side of the equation, this is not the first time this has happened to Daniel Hemrick, just absolutely dominating a race, having the fastest car, and coming up oh so short. You got to feel bad for Daniel Hemrick, but it all, he, at the same time, you have to know a win is just around the corner. Daniel Hemrick is going to win a race eventually. Daniel Hemrick has so much talent. He is going to be a superstar in this sport. It's just a matter of time. Elliot Sadler came home with a strong third place finish in this race. Shane Lee, kudos to Shane Lee, career best fourth place finish there in that three car for Richard Childress Racing. And Tyler Reddick rounds out the top five. Rest of your top 10 were Matt Tift, Ryan Reed, and great runs in this race for Ty Majeski in eighth, Ryan Sieg in ninth, and Jeremy Clements in the 10th position. There's been a lot of comments going around the internet about the 60 car for whatever reason this season not being able to finish races i've seen a lot of people talking about that nice to see the 60 car finish a race in such a great position and nice to see ty majeski get a good run it seems like he is very overdue for that uh it seems like he's taken the brunt of the bad luck in that 60 car this season so it's very nice to see ty majeski pick up a really strong finish in that 60 car 11 through 20th See Ryan Truex here in the 11th position. Strong run for Alex LeBay in 12th, as well as Garrett Smithley in 13th. Quinn Hauf there in the 15th for JD Motor in the 15 for JD Motorsports in 14th. 
21st through 30th, uh, we see some familiar names down here. Ryan Priest in 21st. Most of these guys down here uh, getting caught up in incidents at one point or another on the day. Ross Chastain in 25th. Playoff contender Cole Custer in the 26th position. He rode around after that lap one incident. Uh, ended up 19 laps off the pace. Uh, very slow, not making very good time, but did make up some positions and some points. So today didn't hurt quite as bad for Cole Custer as it could have, and as much as it did for some of these other guys. And then we see Chase Briscoe down here in the 30th position. Final page, 31st through 40th, Spencer Gallagher there in 33rd. It was announced this week that he will be stepping away from driving after the 2018 season, taking a managerial position there at GMS Racing. So we wish him the best after this season. Brandon Jones came home in 36th after that early accident. And then the playoff contenders that took the biggest hits today. This really shakes up the playoff grid after today. Christopher Bell in 37th, Justin Allgaier 38th, and Austin Sindrick in the 39th position. So that's your results from the Kansas Lottery 300. Now we'll head over to the media center. We'll see what John Hunter and the rest of your top finishers had to say after this one. Yeah, what, what we've seen in the history of the Xfinity Series the last couple of years is the first race of each round is always a little dicey. Things happen, and I think people are so anxious. And, and for that to happen so quick, so early, though, on the first lap, and then a quick caution again with the 19, it was just like, man, let's reassess what's what's going on here. What's you know what's making all these people have these issues? So I um, mean, we started off with a you know eighth, ninth place car, and we kept working on it, kept working on it, and. Kevin made some good adjustments, and there, there at the end, we tried to take two tires to get some clean air uh, in front of Daniel. They were so fast, and just see what my car would do, but uh, we couldn't quite hold on to it. But all in all, it was a great day for us. You know, we were on the outside looking in when we started the day's race, and uh, you know, we second in points, plus 14, and all that. But honestly, I don't. You know, you got Christopher and Justin. They both run so good at Texas and really good at Phoenix that they can win anywhere. And uh, you know, Daniel control the race all day today. The Z double zero has been so fast the last month. Tyler Reddick ran good today. Matt Tiff. Everybody's running really good. I don't think you can just try to points race your way in. I think you're going to have to be aggressive, lead laps, run up front, kind of like what Daniel did today. And I think that's going to be your best way to try to make it to homestead. It definitely has a different feel to it than the first round we had. You know, for us, um, you know, initial lap, I saw whatever happened to the seven, saw them shoot at the racetrack and catch the 20. And uh, I hate to see those guys because right now this first race, I'm out of half program. It's an opportunity for all of us to judge each other, right? Judge where our race cars are, where our race. You're fast, are. I'll tell you. You're <laughs> fast. And uh, yeah, like I said, we we just had a really fast race car all weekend, and that it made it fun. That's uh, the most fun I've had racing in a really long time, and um, it's a good confidence booster for all of us to go to the racetrack and have an opportunity to lead laps and uh, win stages and do the things we did this weekend. So. You know, the race itself, uh, I, I thought it was interesting from the way we'd take off from the bottom and, and search around and move around. And one guy, there were comers and goers. Uh, you know, me and the 42 went at it pretty, pretty aggressively all day. And one was better one run, and it flipped to the next. And uh, I thought we were sitting in good shape uh, until that last caution came out. Um, guys did a great job that last pit stop to get us a little bit more of a cushion and allowed us to run our pace there. And thought we were in good shape and just put the last set of tires on and just was crashing sideways. <laughs> I could not do hardly anything to keep it underneath me. But um, all the way up to that point, I was proud of what we did today. And uh, that's what we'll hang our hats on as we roll forward. The last time your dad won was here. And uh, so kind of tell us what that means to you. Yeah, it means a lot. Um, I remember when he won, I was a kid playing on the playground for both days. And our motorhome driver and my mom came running out, Dad won, Dad won, let's go to Victory Lane. And I saw a video of that this week, actually. And um, it it was pretty cool to see how young I was and standing in victory lane, taking home the same trophy that dad took home. Um, he's uh, definitely taught me a lot and has helped me progress through my career, but what a day. Um, th this is definitely amazing to be able to get our first Xfinity win. Um, we had a really good car all weekend from the time that we unloaded off the truck, I felt like. Um, Chiplet and the guys had it tuned up there at the end and we drove away. Um, he made a really good call coming in to get tires there at the end, um, and it was a gamble. I was hoping that there wasn't going to be a caution coming out because um, we're not going to be in the catbird seat like we were. So um, huge thank you to Fire Alarm Services, Chip, um, and everyone that uh, supports us, and Daniel right here.
Thank you. Uh, it was fun racing him really hard all day, racing each other clean, and um, that that's kind of what I have grown up. I've grown up racing against Daniel and late models and coming up through. So um, I think he's won most of the late model races when we've had a battle. So it's uh, good to come out first this time. But uh, um, huge shout out just to everyone that helped support me and um, has got me to this point in my career. And we'll take a look at your playoff grid before wrapping up here tonight. One race down in the round of eight, two races remaining until we decide the championship four that will go to Homestead to race for a championship. Hard to believe we've only got three races left in the Xfinity Series schedule. Just four weeks of racing left for NASCAR, period, across all three national series. Hard to believe we are almost another full season down and we've almost completed 2018, but we're getting there very quickly. And Kansas really shook up this playoff grid today. As you can see here, Daniel Hemrick has made quite the cushion for himself. Uh, 23 points is the gap for Daniel Hemrick above that cutoff line, above Matt Tift in fifth. Daniel Hemrick has got a solid cushion here. He can fairly well cruise through the next two races. As long as he doesn't have any bad luck at Texas or Phoenix, I think with that much of a gap, he's pretty well set for Homestead. That being said, a lot of things can happen in two races. And, and again, we don't know what's going to happen these, these next two races, Texas and Phoenix. That's why we run the races, because we don't know what's going to happen. We can't just automatically say Daniel Hemrick is going to be at Homestead. But he's built quite the cushion for himself, and without anything really catastrophic happening, I think he's pretty well set to go to Homestead. Again, you can't say that 100% for certain, but I think he's a, he's obviously in the best position of anybody here. Elliot Sadler, Tyler Reddick, Tyler Reddick also in pretty good positions here. Elliot Sadler, 14 points above the cutoff. Tyler Reddick, plus 11 I think right now, if you leave Kansas in double digits above the cutoff line, I think you're in a pretty good spot. You're not in a great spot. I mean, they, these guys can still leave Texas in a hole, but they're in a better position than they could be. And then you've got, it gets really tight below that. Christopher Bell, only one point above Matt Tift. And and then you've got Justin Allgaier down here, five points below Christopher Bell, below the cutoff. Christopher Bell and Justin Allgaier, I don't think I'm the only one that looked at those two as the locks for Homestead and it and that it was probably going to be one of those two that wins the championship. And it still could be. It's just amazing to me how one race can really throw that into jeopardy. These guys have so many more playoff points than anybody else, and they still left Kansas with being in jeopardy of not making it to the championship four. It is incredible to me that these guys can be in this position after one race, and that is how unpredictable this playoff system is. Cole Custer right now. We look at Cole Custer in seventh. He is currently 23 points below the cutoff line, below Christopher Bell. Cole Custer is not in a must-win situation yet. Cole Custer is not in a good position. He's in a better position than he would have been had he not rode around for the rest of the race and ended up 19 laps down. He, he picked up a few spots with that and made up a decent amount of points. So he's in a better position than he would have been. He's not in a must-win situation yet. Let's see how Texas goes. Cole Custer can pretty well erase that gap for the most part at Texas if he has a strong run. Pick up some stage points. Have a solid finish. You don't need to win. Just pick up some stage points. Have a solid finish. And Cole Custer is still in this going into Phoenix. Austin Sendrick, on the other hand, 43 points below the cutoff line. Even with a really good race at Texas, he, is, he would still be pretty far in the hole. I think Austin Sendrick is already in a must-win situation. If he wants to make it to the championship for 43 points in two races, 
I believe with where that team usually runs, what a typical finish for that for Austin Cindric in that 22 car outside of road courses has typically been, as long as he doesn't get caught up in a wreck or something, has typically been fifth to tenth, maybe twelfth, somewhere in there. That's been a typical finish for that 22 car when Austin Cindric is in the seat. That being said, with him being that far below the cutoff and with the guys that we have around the cutoff, Christopher Bell, Tyler Reddick, Matt Tiff, Justin Allgaier, Cole Custer, these are all guys we know will run in the top 10, will run in the top five, will contend for a win as long as they don't get caught up in a lap one wreck again. Austin Sendrick is not going to make up 43 points in two races. It's not going to happen. Austin Sendrick has to go into these next two races looking for a win if he wants to get into the championship four. Can he win? That is the question. I'm not going to say yes or no, because to be honest, I don't know if he can. He hasn't won yet. That doesn't mean he can't. But... I think it's going to be very difficult, especially when you have guys like Cole Custer, Justin Allgaier, Christopher Bell right here trying to cling to their playoff lives, guys that we know can contend for this championship and probably maybe should win this championship. When you've got guys like this, when you've got guys like Christopher Bell that have won six races this season, Justin Allgaier's won five races this season, when these guys are already around the cutoff line, they're going to be trying extra hard the next two weeks to get a win so they don't have to worry about that at Phoenix. It's going to be very tough for Austin Sendrick. And the fact that he is a rookie and all the circumstances that he has had this season, bouncing between three different cars, everything he's had to go through. Yes, he's in the 22 car for the entirety of the playoffs, but he's bounced between three different cars this season, has not had a lot of consistency with what he's driving. This is a very high-pressure situation for a kid in a situation like he is in. The question going forward becomes, does he thrive with this kind of pressure, or does he crumble? And it will be... I will be very interested to see how that plays out because I I don't know. I haven't seen enough out of Austin Sendrick to know what he will do in a situation like this. So this will be very interesting the next couple of weeks to see exactly how this plays out for Austin Sendrick and how it plays out for the rest of these guys. Because this Kansas has just thrown a gigantic wrench into this playoff grid, and I love it. This is, I mean, this was what these playoffs were made for. Love them or hate them, this is what these playoffs were made for. Uh, This is the kind of excitement that these playoffs were were meant to breed. Whether you love the playoffs or whether you hate them, this is what they do. And you got to roll with it. And, you know, I think... uh, I think we're setting up for a very exciting final three races of this Xfinity season. I'm excited to uh, get through the rest of the season and see exactly what happens here. But I think that'll do it for us tonight here on the Xfinity Rewind. Um, We tweeted out earlier the ARCA Rewind for Friday night's Kansas 150. That will go up sometime, uh, I guess it's today now, by the time this gets uploaded, sometime today, Sunday. Not sure exactly on a time yet. Um, We're working to get a few things on there that we don't normally have. um, Or a few extra than what we normally have. Um, This ARCA Rewind, if we can do exactly what we're wanting to do with it, is going to be bigger and better than any ARCA Rewind we have done yet. And it is going to be really good. It is going to be... It is going to be a a lot more of what you deserve out of an ARCA Rewind show, and I'm very excited for it. If we can if we can pull this off and make this happen, this is going to be really cool. Uh, but like I said, I'm not exactly sure when it'll go out, uh, but it should be sometime today, sometime on Sunday. So look for that probably later in the day, probably sometime around when the Cup Rewind goes up in the evening. Um, again, not exactly sure when, just we'll see about 
exactly when that goes up. Also, if you haven't seen it already, we announced on Friday, live from Kansas Speedway, our 100 subscriber giveaway. What we are giving away once we hit 100 subscribers. If you haven't seen it, go down below in the description. Uh, there's a link to the video. It is really cool. It is a really cool, one-of-a-kind piece um, that... If you're a fan of the ARCA Racing Series, if you're a fan of Venturini Motorsports, if you're a fan of racing in general, this is just a cool piece. And I it, it, honestly, I wish I could keep it for myself, but I can't because um, I'm going to give it away to one lucky subscriber uh, once we hit 100 subscribers. That's the key. That's the key thing here. We we have to hit 100 subscribers for this giveaway to happen. And, and we're moving toward that. We will hit 100 subscribers. But the quicker we get there, the quicker you have a chance to win this really cool item. So um, if you haven't seen it already, go down. And uh, it's in the description, a link to that video. Uh, check it out. Uh, we describe in the video and down in the description of that video exactly what you have to do to enter. It's very easy. It, it doesn't take much at all to enter to um, to win this. If you're already subscribed to the channel, you're like a third of the way there to, to winning it or having a chance to win it already. So I, I don't know how much easier it could get. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about this. It's, it's one of the coolest things we've ever done on here to have the opportunity to give something like this away. You definitely need to see it if you haven't yet, but, um, yeah, if you haven't done it already, go down below and hit that subscribe button <laughs> so you have a chance to win this um, giveaway item. But just so you don't miss anything going forward here from RNN and ring that bell for notifications. And hit that big thumbs up button if you like the video. It is much appreciated when you do. So with that, this has been the NASCAR Xfinity Series Rewind Show. I'm Garth Allen for Racing News Now.